Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Magic with Zuby. My name is Zuby and if you're brand new to this show, the show is all about a little well-known card game called Magic the Gathering and a little bit more. On today's episode, we are going to be discussing my top five favorite commons from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. That is the new Magic the Gathering set that has just recently come out and it is the Wild West Cowboy set. All right, but before we get into that, uh, let's get into a little bit of updates, specifically some Walrus Game Studio updates. So if you're listening to this, the first Walrus Game Studio product is officially out. Yes, that is right. Our book, Dark Storm Adventures, Silver Flames Legacy is officially out. If you are watching the video right now, I'm holding up the book. This is officially for sale. You can get your copy right now should you wish to get it. All right. It is available right now on DriveThru RPG. And and you can also get the digital copy at DriveThru RPG. Uh, we are also working on getting this on Barnes & Noble as well, too. Uh, Amazon will not be a go. but So this will be available on DriveThru RPG and the physical copy on Barnes & Noble. Uh, links will be in the show notes below uh, for the for the book. It is officially on sale for thirty seven ninety nine, and you can use this book for both five E and Pathfinder, uh, Pathfinder Second Edition. And inside is full color uh, game and maps, and um, you know it's a great adventure that should only take about maybe. Four to five, maybe six sessions, depending on how your play group is. Um, and those are typically about two to three hour sessions. Um, if you do typically play a little bit more, the sessions may be reduced. Uh, work on book two has already begun, and I'm super excited about it. Super pumped that we have our first product out. Um, we've already had like 30 people purchase it and holy crap that that's just insane to me we haven't even begun the marketing push for it yet because i want to wait until we get it on barnes and noble as well too before we start really advertising it out there so thank you again for the people who purchased it uh you're awesome um and you know i i, I can't wait to see how this does i, I want to get this out in the local community out there where i live and it's just going to be, I don't know, it's just kind of surreal that, you know, this is happening. This is actually happening. Um, so thank you to that. Thank you to everyone. Uh, as far as any updates on Network Simulator, um, we are like super close to getting the demo uh, done and ready. We're really, really, really hoping to have the demo ready before Cisco Live in the beginning of June because I would love to meet some people out there and be able to give the demo out to some people and have them actually check it out and play while at Cisco Live. I mean, that would just be phenomenal. Um, but we're trying. We're trying. Um, it's We're still working on a pre-production has already begun on some of the early levels. And so we're working on that. So it's just, it's going. It's going very well. And it's just... Holy crap, we have officially broken over 10,000 wish lists, which is just blows my mind. Um, when we get closer to the demo releasing, um, I will be doing another live Q&A on stream uh, just to go over the game, the level, like any questions people may have. Um, so it's, you know, it's just some super exciting fun times. Um, so, I mean... Yeah, th that's pretty much it for when it comes to, you know, um, sorry, I got distracted by magic cards there for a second. Uh, that's pretty much it for when it comes down to, you know, walrus updates. It's We're working on the second book coming, uh, NetSim, slow and steady, and it's everything's starting to come along. Uh, my focus lately has been Darkstorm because we just released the book, so that's kind of been my big focus right now, getting that out, working on the marketing stuff, uh, public relations type stuff. So it's, I mean, that's just awesome. But uh, just some other quick updates. So yeah, I mentioned I'll be at Cisco Live beginning of June. Um, 
And then the other thing that's been going on, at least just me, magic related news is the magic bug has fully bit me again. Um, I bought a box. I, I did a live stream opening of opening Lord of the Rings. Um, I'm now building three different Lord of the Rings deck, a fellowship of the ring deck where the only creatures are the nine members of the fellowship. I'm building a hobbit deck called the scoring of the Shire, which is just nothing but the hobbits and food tokens. Um, and then I'm building, of course, the host of Mordor deck where Sauron is the, the commander and, you know, just anything with the Nazgul, the, you know, Witch King and Gothmog and the Balrog and all that stuff. So it's pretty fun. I, I'm wor still working on the deck list for that. So, you know, hoping to share that soon on my Twitter. Um, so I guess let's get right into it. So Outlaws of Thund Thunder Junction is the brand new Magic the Gathering set and, I instead because so what I used to do in the past was do like a full set review like these this is the my review of all the white cards of all the blue cards all the black cards all that and I'm like that was exhausting and it was a lot of work to uh, edit all that so we're doing I, I want to slowly sort of get back similar into that but we're going to be doing you know just my top five favorites of commons uncommons rares mythic rares and just go from there so e there's going to be so this will be a shorter episode than normal because we're just going to go over like my top five favorite commons and then the next episode is just going to be top five you know favorite uncommons and so on and so forth so i'm going to try to record these you know within around the same time period so i can just release you know two of them a week something like that um but yeah so that's the idea and, and the way that i'm sort of basing on how these are my personal top five favorite is whether or not i would use them in commander or want to play them in uh limited as well too like in draft or sealed uh, which i didn't get to go to a pre-release for outlaws of thunder junction there's just my local magic scene it's dead it's completely dead you know we do have an amazing new local game shop around us but it is primarily D, D and warhammer which you know hey great D, D for me that's awesome you know I, i'm not complaining about that it's just there's like zero magic and you know no one ever plays magic they're very rarely do they and it's like and so there's like no pre so if i really wanted to go to a pre-release i'd have to travel like an hour out of my way and i'm like Ugh, i don't want to do that to be honest it's not only and not that i I'm not excited about this set, but it's not a set where it's like, I got to drop everything and, and, you know, really be a part of it. You know, it wasn't like that. So anyways, so, um, let's get into my top five commons of outlaws of thunder junction. And if you're looking at the video, uh, you'll notice on the top right there, uh, the card has shown up. So we're just going to go over the top five favorite commons of Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Uh, the first one being Consuming Ashes for two and double black. It is an instant exile target creature. If it had mana value three or less, Surveil 2. And Surveil 2 is basically scry, but instead of putting it on the bottom of your library, you put it in your graveyard. So not only is this a killer card and limited uh, really great removal, but holy crap, even in Commander, this is super useful. Uh, especially if you're playing any kind of graveyard shenanigans like Muldratha or, you know, Yarrick or whatever, Sultai or, you know, mono black graveyard shenanigans deck you're kind of playing. This is a perfect card. You know, not only does it get rid of a pesky target, but, you know, you get the chance for surveilling too. Um, you can't go wrong with this card at all. Like it, it's premium removal if you're drafting those colors, or really, you know, you want an inexpensive removal for your EDH deck as well too. So, I, I mean, th this is in no particular order, but if I had to pick an order, like this would almost be number one for me personally. Uh, next up, we've got Stagecoach Security for four and a white. It is a human soldier creature. That is a 4-5. When, when this enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1, and gain vigilance until end of turn. And you can plot for 3 and a white. And if just to 
uh, reiterate what plot is, it is a new mechanic from Outlaws of Thunder Junction, where you may pay three and a white and exile this card from your hand, cast it as a sorcery on a later turn without paying its mana cost. Plot only is a sorcery. So this is a great kind of card in Limited. This is like your basic, you know, go wide type beater card in Limited, where as soon as you play it, you know, not only you're going to buff your creatures, you no longer have to tap your creatures, and it really kind of forces your opponent to think, and okay, what am I going to do here? How am I going to, you know, defend against this? So I love these kind of cards in Limited. It, these are some of my favorite because go wide strategies are usually pretty good depending on the format. Um, but you know, I, I, I love these kind of cards. And if I'm in this color or wanting that go, you know, go wide type strategy, this is definitely a card that I would pick. Um, next up, we've got bridled bighorn for three and a white. It is a sheep mount creature that's a three four, has vigilance, which I love vigilance. Uh, whenever this attacks while saddled, create a 1-1 white sheep creature token and you saddle for two. So saddle is pretty similar to crew uh, for when you're crewing the artifact vehicles. Um, the difference being is when you saddle a creature, usually it'll do an extra effect. Since it's already a creature anyway that you can attack with, saddling it will give it an extra effect. And this extra effect... Once again, I love those go wide strategies in limited, and this just helps you go wide even more. Um, just creates those tokens. I have a thing for token decks, and I love tokens. One of my favorite EDH deck is Maha, and just going wide with tokens, then dropping a crater hoof behemoth and swing and win. Um, so once again, I mean, how can I resist a card like this if I'm in these colors? It's it's a no brainer for me. Next up, we've got Geyser Drake. It is a two and a blue creature that is a two three, has flying, and as long as it's not your turn, spells you cast cost one less to cast. So, great, great card in limited. I mean, not only is it a flyer that can evade creatures and get in over to your opponent, but you know, help you, um, you know, commit crimes easier. Uh, that is right, because there is the crime mechanic in this set where pretty much a crime is anytime you're interacting with your opponent. So, like, if you're playing, you know, the classic is it where, you know, do a lightning bolt-esque type card. Um, or, you know, you're playing blue-black or it's some creature removal. Uh, you know, helps these instants or sorceries just cost less. And that's pretty valuable and limited. So love these kind of cards it's i always look for them in my draft or sealed great card and also not bad art too i i kind of like it and last but not least for our top five commons uh, it is jailbreak scheme for one blue it is a sorcery but it has spree where you can choose one or more additional costs you can uh plus three Put a 1-1 counter on target creature. It can't be blocked this turn, which is amazing. Great way to finish uh, a player. Or pay plus 2 and target artifact or creature's owner puts it on top or bottom of their library. Another great thing if you want to, you know, get rid of a pesky uh, creature out there uh, on your opponent. So these kind of cards are always great. Like these are the kind of, you know, hopefully a finisher type card where, you know, you, you just need to get that extra bit of damage in to your opponent and, oh, hey, now my creature is unblockable and, oh, your other creature that could possibly block it or do something, uh, we're going to just put it on the bottom of your library or, or, or make you put it on top, you know, whichever. So love these kind of cards and the spree mechanic I kind of really like. At first I was a bit hesitant on liking it because it just felt like, you know, extra kicker costs um, but in a sense you know it allows you to be a little bit more flexible on what you want to do because hey let's say you only have three mana but you and you need to get rid of that pesky card you know boom here you go three mana and there you go or you know you want to pay the full six mana which is not very hard to do unlimited and you know now you've got two kind of effects that could really help you out so I, I've liked the spree cards I've seen so far, and Jailbreak Scheme was my favorite one out of the commons. 
Um, I will say, just overall, out of all the common cards in this set, it was kind of hard to pick five of them. I mean, commons are always hard to pick, right? Because commons aren't normally very good in the grand scheme of things. Uh, but it, 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 this set did feel a little bit harder than normal for trying to pick some of my favorite commons. And, you know, it obviously, you know, didn't get much easier as I went up the rarities, but, uh, well, actually, no, it got easier as I went up the rarities. It was just, I, there were so many more uncommons and rares that I liked, which you'll see in the, in the next few episodes. So there you have it. Those are my top five favorite commons in Outlaws of Thunder Junction. You know, I'd love to hear from you all. Like, what are your favorite commons in Outlaws of Thunder Junction? You know, let me know in, you know, the comments below. Or just hit me up on Twitter at MagicWazubi and let me know. Because it's, um, you know, awesome. I'm on there all the time. Probably, I'm, I'm just still a little addicted to Twitter. Or X, whatever the hell you want to call it now. So there you go. That's the end of the show here. Uh, hope you all enjoyed listening and or watching. And I appreciate each and every one of you. And I will remind you to go and purchase my first adventure module book, Dark Storm Adventures, Silver Flames Legacy Escape to Stangate. It is amazing. Thank you all for listening and watching, and I hope you all have a great night.